cellular and heterotrophic. For example, fungi digest their food externally and absorb their nutrients, while animals ingest whole food and digest it internally. So animals have a variety of life cycles, many reproduce sexually, some asexually, and some combine both of the life cycles. Many of them also have a dipole life cycle. And all the animals are descended from a single common ancestor. They are divided into two categories, vertebrates and invertebrates. So now, I'm going to talk about the common features of animals. Firstly, animals are multicellular and all animal cells lack a cell wall. Secondly, animals are heterotrophs, meaning they obtain nutrition from external sources. Additionally, Animals are typically motile, due to their well-developed nervous and muscular systems. Last but not least, most animals reproduce sexually, beginning life as a two and zygote, which undergoes development to produce a multicellular organism that has specialized tissues. Under the subtopic Ancestry of Animals, Animals are descended from an ancestor resembling a hollow and spherical colony of flagellated cells. Among protists, the coenoflagellate, which is a single cell with a flagellum, most resemble the last single cell ancestor of animals. The transition from colonial flagellates to multicellular animals may have begun by aggregation of a few flagellated cells. Individual cells within a colony may have specialized and two tissue layers may have arisen by enfolding of certain cells into a whole sphere. So, these factors are also affected by two things, the HOX genes and the DNA alteration. With respect to the symmetry five, symmetry is defined as the pattern of similarity of, that can be observed in an object. There are three types of symmetry in the animal kingdom. Asymmetry or lack of symmetry is seen in sponges that have no particular pattern to body shape. Animals which exhibit radiosymmetry are organized circularly, similar to a wheel, such that any longitudinal cut through the center point produces two identical halves. For animals which exhibit bilateral symmetry as adults, 
they have definite left and right halves and only a single longitudinal cut down the center line of the animal produces two equal halves. Now, let us look at the phylogenetic tree of animals. All animal phyla living today are most likely descended from a colonial flagellated protist living about 600 MYA. This phylogenetic or evolutionary tree is a hypothesis and uses morphological and molecular data to determine which phyla are most closely related to one another. So, as we all know, sponges are multicellular but they do not have truly specialized tissues. True specialized tissues only exist in more complex animals as they undergo embryonical development. So, I'm very curious to know, Liana, what are the first tissue layers that appear? Okay, sure. The first tissue layers that appear are called as gen layers. Gen layers give rise to the organ and organ system of any of complex animals. For example, the cinderians, uh, simple animals, have two layers, two tissue layers, called as ectoderm and endoderm. Therefore, they are called as diploblastic. Oh, I see. That's interesting. By the way, do you know that uh, animals that develop specialized organs are termed as triploblastic? Oh, I don't know. Is it can you is it that? Yeah, they are termed so because as embryos, they have three tissue layers that are ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Shin, do you familiar with the terms of protosterm and deuterosterm? Um, I heard of it before, but I don't really know much about that. Okay, there are a few differences between protosterm and deuterosterm. For example, the cleavage. Protosterm have spiral cleavage, while deuterosterm have radial cleavage. Do you know any other aspect that differentiate them? Well, I know that for protostomes, the first opening will become the mouth. Uh, for deuterosterm, the first opening will become the anus, and the second opening will become the mouth. Yes, that's correct. And another thing that we could look into is both of these things have a structure called column, but it is formed by different way. In the protostem, the column is formed by the eating of the insulin, while in the protostem, the column is formed by the advocating of the pinnating tract. Okay. Okay. Shun, I think that's all for the time being. We could learn a lot of things to our session here. Yeah. Thank you for being my partner. Yeah, thank you too.